the one that makes the palms sweat, the crosswind landing. But first, a word of advice. You can't make a good crosswind landing if you don't survive the turn to final. Be sure to account for the wind in the pattern. If it blows you past the approach path, there's a tendency to try to make a steep turn to get back on final. Many pilots have lost it in cross-control stall mishaps. As in all landings, first consider the factors you'd account for in a totally benign Landing situation. Landing point, runway surface, target speeds. Then add in the X factor or factors. In this case, the crosswind. Once on final, are you going to crab or slip to keep the flight wet? This question has been fodder for endless pilot lounge discussion, and the answer is essentially a matter of preference. Some pilots are uncomfortable with the cross controls needed for side slips, and so prefer the crab. The crab simply requires pointing the nose of the plane toward the wind to account for drift and keep the flight path aligned with the runway. However, the pilot is going to have to make the transition from the crab to the slip before landing to get the nose of the plane pointed down the runway. If you land in the crab, the plane may go off the side of the runway during the landing roll or landing gear tires may peel off their wheels. Those who prefer to slip all the way down final say they like having time getting a feel for the controls in the slip instead of transitioning from a crab in the last seconds of flight. The descent rate will be a little greater in a slip, but not by much. Some POHs advise against slipping the aircraft with full flaps or when fuel falls below a certain level because lateral inertial forces may move fuel away from the fuel lines to the engine, resulting in power loss. Whether you crab or slip, you'll have to adjust control inputs to account for the changes in wind speed and direction as you descend. If conditions are gusty, add half the difference between the wind speed and peak gusts to your usual approach speed. Don't try to finesse the approach in a gusty crosswind. This is nasty stuff. The airplane will probably be bucking and bouncing around the approach path. That's okay. Just ride it down. This is not the time for a full stall landing but you should still land on the mains with the nose wheel slightly higher. What about flaps? You hear lots of discussion among pilots about whether to use full flaps in gusty crosswinds. The argument against full flaps is that it just provides more surface area the gusts and crosswinds can push against, and the lower approach speed associated with full flaps may not be sufficient to maintain crosswind control. The argument for full flaps? Well, full flaps will lower your stall speed, it also gives you a better view of the runway because it pitches the nose down. The POH will be your guide for flap use in various conditions. When wind conditions permit, the Air Safety Foundation recommends using full flaps for landings. If you think the crosswind is too strong for full flaps, give some thought to finding a runway more aligned with the wind. If you have to land with a strong crosswind, you should use the minimum flap for runway length. How much crosswind can your aircraft handle? Well, the POH has the demonstrated crosswind velocity. Is this the maximum it can land in? No. It is only the amount that the manufacturer demonstrated the aircraft is capable of landing in. With the right pilot, it could probably handle more. How much? It's hard to say, but for most of us, let's consider it a limit. If there's not enough rudder to compensate for banking into the wind, then there's too much crosswind. There's usually less wind the closer you get to the ground. But rudder effectiveness decreases along with airspeed, so there still may not be enough rudder. If you're not sure if you have enough rudder to handle the crosswind, you can fly down to the runway to judge the conditions close to the ground, then land or go around as conditions warrant. Always be prepared to go around, and don't be shy about diverting to another airport either. As pilots, we tend to focus on accomplishing the mission. We figure we don't score any points for going to plan B, settling for a secondary objective, but that's part of what being PIC is all about. There are big negative points if they have to fix the aircraft after landing. Having the wisdom to know when to err on the side of safety. That's truly art. You'll also hear some pilots advise retracting the flaps as soon as ground contact is made in very gusty conditions to decrease lift and get the weight on the main tires. But there's always the possibility that in the heat of the moment, a pilot can reach for the wrong switch, and boom, instead of the flaps coming up, the gear does. For that reason, the Air Safety Foundation recommends not reconfiguring the aircraft in any way until clear of the active runway.